Hello, my name is Gary Flanagan, and this is Music We Like, and I'm honored to be here with my friends Jeff and Andrew, and over the next two hours, uh, I will be speaking with Jeff and Andrew about my music, past and present, and I'm very, very happy to be here. And the first song that we will be hearing is from my very first album, which came out 20 years ago, believe it or not, and this song is called We Have the Dance Floor to Ourselves. All right, we're here. Music hey we like. Hello. So, Gary. Yes. You've been doing this for 20 years. Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I started recording and writing songs over 20 years ago, uh, but I actually started releasing my music to the public about 20 years ago, around 1998, 1999. This yeah. is our 20th episode. We totally planned this. Oh, <laughs> it is our 20th episode. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you a question. Okay, so, you know, what prompted you to make music in the first place? Did you, was it the music you were listening to? Were you listening to Brave New Waves and heard some really cool stuff? In uh, uh, that, that's a, that, Brave New Waves, that's that, too early. <laughs> I, I had that lined up for way later in the show. That's a great question. <laughs> My goodness, where to start? Uh, well, first of all, um, I have no musical background at all. I grew up, I'd never taken a music lesson. Uh, I, I still, to this day, still don't know how to read sheet music. But when I was about 15, my mom and dad gave me an old Casio keyboard. And uh, I got my hands on a, on a book called Play Rock Keyboards. <laughs> Play and, Rock Keyboards. Do you yes. still have that? I still have it. Awesome. And it's still my Bible. And everything I know about music, chords, bass lines, melodies, I learned from that book. And, wow. And, and just very slowly, very eventually, I started writing songs. Um, in the early days, my home studio was just a couple of cassette decks. So I, I did overdubs by jumping from one cassette deck to another and back and forth. <laughs> That's so old school. Yeah. And then from that, I went to reel to reel. And then from that, I went to uh, a cassette four track. Um, but yeah, it just kind of grew from there. Um, and uh, it's been a wild ride. Uh, who'd have thought some guy who'd never had a music lesson would put out 12 albums. So, And you were you're sorting albums. out all the tech yourself, too. It's not like you could have hopped online and got tutorials like you were... Good point, yeah. yeah because when I started writing and recording songs, this, is, this was like 90, 91, long before the internet. Wow. Um, so it was a lot of trial and error, a lot of just me sitting in my bedroom. I mentioned earlier that... Uh, that, that that song we heard at the beginning of the show was actually recorded in my old bedroom in the mobile home where, <laughs> where my parents still live uh, in this tiny, tiny little room, probably smaller than this room, uh, with my little four track, cassette four track. So, yeah. yeah awesome. That's fa it's, so, it's so fascinating. I love the idea of like uh, an artist's journey to where they are because you just came out with a new album so you're still yeah, doing this yeah. you're still you're still pumping out these this great music yeah and and to be honest for for a time there I, I didn't know if I would ever be doing anything new uh, to be frank you know I've had issues with you know anxiety and and depression and uh, there were times when I thought I'm never going to be able to do another song I'm never going to be able to do another album and uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, as you get older as I'm sure you guys might relate, uh, you know, the process gets slower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Life gets in the way, man. There's right, a lot of right. things, a lot of other things happening. Exactly. And, and, uh, you know, whereas in my twenties I could knock out an album in a few days. Now it takes a few years. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. But, but you're still doing it. And that's the most amazing thing, you know, well, because it's, you know, it's a, it's obviously a, an extreme passion of yours that you don't is. want to stop doing, for example. Yeah, I, I, I can't deny it. Uh, I have a lot of interests. I love photography. Actually, my first love is movies, and it's, it's still a big dream of mine to make a movie. Someday. Well, you're, a lot of your videos have very cinematic uh, aspects yes, to them. Like yeah, and it's just, um, but there's something about music. Uh, I, I always go back to it, and not even just making music, just listening to music, right. you know? I, I became quite a, a music fan when I was about 10, 11 years old, just listening to stuff on the radio. Yeah. Well, Brave New Waves. Brave New Waves. Ah, yeah. yes, yes. Honestly, <laughs> uh, that's where I cut my teeth as far as like learning about alternative music. I mean, right. we talked about this probably every show, Andrew and I, we talk oh, yeah. about, we lament about Brave New Waves and, yes. and David Wisdom and Night Lines and stuff. Like, I mean, yes. those, that was Patty really Schmidt good. And Patty Smith, Patty Schmidt. Schmidt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, I remember it very well. Yeah, that same bedroom. I remember staying up till you know two in the morning or whatever, wa listening yep. to Brave New Waves. And I, I remember discovering a lot of great bands through that show. Yeah, me too. Know? That's where I first heard about, you know, The Fall and Sonic Youth and, uh, you know, The Wonder Stuff and just yes. like, you know, all these crazy bands you would never... Ned's Atomic Dustbin, yes. I remember here, yes. and The Wedding Present. And <laughs> Anyway, uh, but no, it's, it's great to be able to... Uh, you know, be influenced by music you hear on the radio and then make albums about it, you know, and like... Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and, and mostly what I do is on uh, synthesizers and it's, it's electronic. Uh, th there's something about that approach that, that always fascinated me. Yeah. Um, some people, some people feel that synthesizers are very cold and very clinical and they can be, they definitely can be. No question. Yeah. But, but I also feel that if you, if you do it right, since synth, synths can also be very warm and very beautiful. Textural and, and, and yes, yeah, yes, no, exactly. I, I absolutely 100%. agree. Yeah. How have you found, uh, have you found like the, uh, like, you know, a lot of your career has been sent, uh, has been spent rather here in St. John, New Brunswick. How have you found that the community has like, uh, you know, has, have they, uh, like accepted your type of music or like, you know, like your style of music and stuff. Cause I know like, you know, there's a lot of punk rockers and right and, right. and stuff like that. But I, I think that you've like, I've been to at least a dozen shows of yours and actually one where I break danced. Do you remember that? I re oh, definitely. Yes. <laughs> when you say broke dance, <laughs> broke dance. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'll never but, forget uh, that show. Oh, yeah. that was so funny. Yeah. I think I went instantly went outside and just was like sick and then came back <laughs> in because it's spinning on my back at like, yes. you know, 30 some odd years old and anyway I, I actually remember at one point the crowd going go jeff go, go jeff. jeff yeah they're go all jeff. going go jeff <laughs> go jeff yeah i know because like you were like we had this planned and like you you were like everybody make some room make some room jeff's gonna break dance and i was just like oh god here we go <laughs> anyway it was supposed to be your last show but you played many shows after that uh, which yeah was, yeah which was great yeah i i i to answer your question oh um, yeah just about St. John in general. And he brought uh, it back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I found that the support has always been great. And you're right that um, what I do is kind of off the beaten path and not very typical of what you often hear in St. John. But despite that, I found that even though what I do is quite quirky and quite unusual, uh, there's always been a lot of support. Yeah, uh, I've always felt that as well for you. you know? Yeah, and, and that... Quite frankly, when I first started doing live gigs, I used to think, oh my God, the people just aren't going to accept this or they're, they're not going to understand it. They're not going to like it. And, and some people didn't understand it, but for the most part, uh, a lot of people had wonderful things to say and, uh, you know, it's just been great. So your music is synth music. Oh, you want, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> Andrew. No. You wanted to say something. No, no, I'm listening. And, and, and. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to get a word in. <laughs> I'm not trying very hard. I'm enjoying myself. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. <laughs> so I was just going to say, like, your music is very synth-oriented. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you had to put it in, uh, pigeonhole it into, like, certain genre, like, mm -hmm. uh, it w would it be, like, new wave or... Yeah, like I, I often say either new wave mm. or synth pop. Synth pop, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm very, very influenced by a lot of the new wave bands from the 80s. Yeah. Uh, um, like the Human League, Depeche Mode, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, uh, all of those bands that uh, I discovered when I was a kid, basically. Um, I, I, I have such a fondness for the 80s. A lot of people make fun of the 80s and, and you know, kind of underline the, the, the cheesiness of the 80s. And I, I would be the first to admit there was a lot of cheese in the 80s. No question. Uh, but, but from my point of view, there was also a lot of fun stuff. There was a lot of good stuff. Uh, and, and that's kind of what really uh, was ingrained in me at an early age. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. What were you going to say, Andrew? Oh, well, just talking about the, uh, the scene, you know, um, mm. we were talking a little bit before, um, before the show started yes. with, uh, Sean, who you just met, who works for the station and is also part of Suiku 64. And there, I mean, there are like shows, like specific, like shows happening, even with quality block, you know, there are particular, uh, shows where there are like, there seems to be, you know, uh, a steady stream of uh, of uh, people to play with, you know, and yes. yeah, <clears throat> and I, and I, I mentioned that earlier. Um, back, I started doing shows, I think, in two thousand one, two thousand two, and at that time, especially in New Brunswick, there was only a handful of of electronic acts. 
Um, actually, back in the day, I'll also mention, um, I used to publish a fanzine called Night Waves. Oh, I see. And uh, I, I, I used to interview like a lot of local electronic acts, and sometimes it was pretty hard to find them. Uh, there were a few out there, but uh, I'm very encouraged to see that there's, there's more nowadays. Right. So it's, well, it's, there are so many yeah, electronic arts, yeah, artists great. in St. John. It's and fantastic. And, and just, and the surrounding area, like, yeah, you know, like yeah. Moncton with Robert, is it Moncton, Rob, Robert T? Robert T, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And Paranerd as well. And Paranerd, right, yes. yeah. You've and heard, you've Paranerd's heard Paranerd. playing a show uh, soon, Sean, right? With, so Gold Punks and uh, Suiku 64 and Paranerd are playing 26th, January, <laughs> 10 p.m. <laughs> Where? At Taco Pica. At Taco Pica. Yeah. Nice. Taco yeah. Pica is a wonderful spot to uh, have a show, I feel. Like Absolutely. it's just... I don't know what it is about that place. Maybe perhaps it doesn't have the best sound, but it's it has the best vibe. No question. Sure, no sure. question. Santos, go team Santos. <laughs> He's the best. He is totally the best. So yes. if you, you know, did want to return to the live <laughs> stage, that's, mm. the, that's the place to do it. I see. And you've got other like, you know, like-minded electronic artists yes. to share that stage with. But I understand that, you know, <laughs> it is a, it is a process. It's a process. You yes. can't just jump in there and, do it right sure. i mean but we all we all love you gary Aww. we need you to come back thank you so much play some shows sometime <laughs> yes i agree 100 <laughs> percent. thank you thank you <laughs> let's right. play a tune yeah let's play a tune i was just going to say that i think this is ill wind or three wind <laughs> it's <laughs> the first the tune uh the radiohead's new album no no wait no, no? not a new album it's just it's a not? b-side oh, it's just a b-side yeah they just released it uh, digitally i mean it was out on some versions of the of the uh oh. moon shape pool oh, which I is a, a ridiculous good album but yeah, they just released it on, uh, they just started streaming it. Ah. Uh, cool. Play it back. Mm. Yeah. All right. It. Let's do it. On Music We Like. All right. We're back on Music We Like. That was rad. That yeah. was rad. So what was that called again? That was? That was a group called New Jazz. And Jeff. And, yeah, and I was playing along to that with my roll-up uh, piano. <laughs> uh, and uh, it actually sounded okay <laughs> um if you do say so yourself yeah i mean i'm in the band now <laughs> so uh there's that um metaphors metaphorical music is named the album and that was horn in the middle and before that we heard radiohead off ill wind and that was a track called ill wind so uh, gary uh, what kind of mood do you do your best work in uh oh that's a great question um <clears throat> I've always been very creative. I don't know if I would say it's a particular mood, but a particular time of day, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a real night owl. And uh, I've been known to stay up till, you know, four or five in the morning recording and, and writing stuff. Right. So that tends to be the, the time of day that I'm most productive. Yeah. Same here. I'm a night owl as well. And yeah. I do most of the creative output at night for yes. sure. I yeah. like <clears throat> my creativity is is rather sporadic, so I just never sleep. That way, I'll, I'll always be awake in case inspiration hits. Yes. Yeah, you do stay up really late and then get up really early. I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> I just don't have enough time for sleep. It's it's too unimportant. Oh, I wow. love sleep, man. It's my favorite thing. See, I, I I love sleep too, but I can totally get like the uh, if I didn't have to sleep, wow, the things I could get done, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were talking about how we're all, you know, we're all getting to be old men yes. and I, I should say that uh, this whole like sleep phenomenon that I've had like I do I typically stay up really late and get up really early. I've done it for years but I'm starting to not have as easy a time doing that like now I, I value like I've ne I can't believe I say things like oh man I uh, I had five extra minutes of sleep and it was amazing like I can't believe I would say something like that but I do say that yes now. yes yeah I, I uh yeah, I, I love getting sleep when I do, but uh, I often think, hmm, if I could just not sleep for a week, imagine the, the songs I could record or the <laughs> art I could create, you know? Right. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you something about, uh, how many albums have you have you released uh, the, now? The new one is number 12. Number 12. Number 12, yeah. So how many of these and... Uh, you know, are, are sort of like concept albums. Well, albums where you sort of have a, a giant grand idea and you bring it all together with, you know, all the different tracks wow. and stuff. Do you have any, any that, that are? That's a great question. Uh, in terms of concept albums, well, certainly the, the new one is called Son of Parkway. Uh, and most people from St. John know about Parkway Mall. 
And the concept of this album was uh, when I was a kid, well, teenager, kid, I spent a lot of time at Parkway Mall, which was, it's still located on the east You're side of the You were a mall rat at Parkway? Very <laughs> much a mall rat, yes. I remember Parkway Mall as well, yeah. Yeah. And this was in the 80s. This was in, you know, they, they had a, a record store. They had department stores. Everything was there. I used to love hanging out there. It was a sp social spot. I would go there to buy my comic books. I would go there to buy the latest records. And just the concept of the new album is trying to, to capture that, that magic of that time. Oh, fantastic. Uh, the nostalgia. Um, and also there's some songs on the new album that deal with being an adult and tr dealing with adulthood and dealing with responsibility, but also still kind of looking back, go looking forward and looking back at the same time. Right, I right. Think. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Are, are there any other albums in your, in your, uh, you know, your discography that are also, uh, concept albums basically? Um, sort of? yeah, I, I, I actually, believe it or not, um, back in 2007, I did a punk album. Uh, it was called Reclusive Mute. Yes. And uh, I, 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 I can't play guitar, but basically I, I figured out how to play like three notes and I made a whole album out of that. <laughs> just just, just like the Ramones. Yeah, yeah. So I just added a lot of distortion. and uh, But yeah, that, that, that was sort of like a, a punk album, sort of looking at, you know, anger and, and uh, frustration and uh, isolation and... and loneliness and basically. alienation alienation and yeah all yeah. the Asians all the Asians yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great man I mean I think that that sort of is a really great spr uh, springboard for like for creating the art once you have like an idea like okay I want to yes. do an album about you know Parkway Mall and yes. the way the way I felt when I was younger and how that nostalgia is kind of gone there's so much of that happening now when exactly. we, we live in a world of like slow motion gentrification and those things are slowly just kind of you know dying out basically like so. dinosaurs almost you know yeah and and I mean there's a lot of talk about how uh, online shopping has has killed the mall and I, there's probably a lot of truth to that but uh, the thing that I remember is that the mall wasn't just where you went to shop. The mall was, you know, where you went to socialize and where you went to find girls and, uh, go to the arcade yeah. and, and, and yeah, just hang know, out and right. be, be teenagers. Exactly. You know? And actually I think that, that, that teenagers still do that to this day. Just like people drive up and down King street in the summer in their they cars. Yeah. At the mall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're, yeah, they're, do yeah. People can't see what you're doing though. Man. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just going to assume they can see what I'm doing. <laughs> well, no, I don't think they what? can. Oh, they don't, they no. don't know what I'm doing? There's no camera. Oh. There used to be a camera in, in the uh, hey, Everybody studio. do it. Let's everybody do it and see people. Okay. Know yes, yes. There, I'll we're give all the, using I'll do our the, phones. Yeah, we're all magic. using our phones. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. But uh, go to the mall. <clears throat> kids now, they go to the mall to use their phones. Yes. To charge their phones. Yes. <laughs> so have you, have you uh, released any cassettes? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, funny enough, I think way back in the early days, I, I put out a couple of my albums on cassette. Yeah. Uh, but it's been a long time. Like I, the albums that are, have not like been put out on CD afterwards or just, or are they just like, yeah, I, I'm talking early, like, early stuff. Way, like, like way, way back. I didn't even, I didn't even go by my own name, uh, way, way back around like, what'd you go by in the I'm very, very, in the very early <laughs> days. I used to call myself the Northern Electric Orchestra. Oh, <laughs> was that uh, fantastic. Was it still when you were one? Y yes, yes. Just, yeah. One man one band. Human? Just, just myself. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Back then, um, I would I recorded an album and I d made a bunch of cassette copies, and I don't think I've done cassettes since then. And vinyl? Have you had any vinyl releases? Uh, uh, not full albums, but um, I appeared on vinyl twice. Oh, okay. Um, Back about 10 years ago, uh, a German label put out a, a, a worldwide compilation of electronic songs and uh, they put up one of my songs on there. Cool. It, was, it was a double vinyl set. Actually, it was the song Every Friday Night, which is on my, my first album. Yeah. So that was my first time on vinyl. And then the second time I was on vinyl was actually the, the punk project that I did. Uh, a buddy of mine in Halifax named Derek Hiltz. Uh, him and his wife had a band called Electro Shiak Therapy. Oh, I love and, it. Shiak. Uh, <laughs> they, they were a, a punk band who, who their lyrics were in Shiak. And they, we did a split seven inch. So they had a, a, on one side of the seven inch, they had a couple <clears throat> songs. And then 
my punk project had a couple of songs on the other side. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Those who are just joining us, we're, we're talking to Gary Flanagan, a local uh, living legend of electronic music. Oh, jeez. Oh, no, truly. <laughs> I mean, I, a lot of people have had great times at your concerts, man. Oh, that's, that's What is this, a prime minister of electronic music? Uh, <laughs> I've heard that before. Um, I, I'm, I'm very uh, humbled by that title. Uh, yeah. I, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, man. All right, let's hear a track off your newest album, all right? That sure. you uh, selected track number two. I'm not sure what it's yeah. called, but uh, um, maybe you could uh, do a little preamble. Sure. Um, this song is called The September Child. And uh, basically, I actually wrote this song about 20 years ago. And uh, it was always kind of running through my head. And uh, I decided to record it for the new album. Um, Basically, it's just a, a catchy um, pop song um, with sort of ethereal lyrics. Fantastic. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Cool. The music we like. i 
We're back. You're listening to music we like on local mm -hmm. 107.3 FM CFMH coming to you live from the Thomas J. Connors Student Center at the University of St. John campus. Perfect. Whoa. Good job. <laughs> that was the second time doing that. Wow. <laughs> you taught me well, Andrew. <laughs> and we have a special guest in the audience in this studio. <laughs> <laughs> we have a special guest in the audience too, audience person. <laughs> I want to want to introduce him to the audience. The crowd went mild. The, <laughs> the crowd went mild. <laughs> Mr. Gary Flanagan. Hey, Gary. Hello, hello. <sighs> so, what do you want to talk about? Oh my goodness, whatever you like. Anything I wanted to all. ask you a question, actually. Sure. I got a question for you, Gary. Okay. You ready for the question? Um, I think questions about less and less ready the more you asked. build it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, it's not really. It, I mean. You know, the music is one thing, right? Music is like, uh, you know, is, is the bread and butter of like your artistic creation when you release music. Mm -hmm. But there's also the artwork. I wanted to ask you some questions about your artwork. Sure. And how important that is to you. And yes. how do you factor it in? Like, how do you, uh, you know, how do you make decisions about the artwork that you use for your releases? Like, you know? Wow. Well... Uh, first of all, I think I would say that um, I've always been a super creative person. Um, I, I eat, I breathe, I create. Yes. I, I've always been that way. Uh, I often tell my wife, Janelle, that uh, if I can't create, I'd probably shrivel up and die. Or you know, it, It's a real integral part of who I am. Um, and, and what I find interesting is um, I, I love music. Music is a big passion. I love photography, I love uh, movies, all writing, all of that. And what I find happens is one kind of bleeds into the other sometimes. Yes. Right? Like, for example, I might be out somewhere taking photos, and while I lift the camera up to my face and take a shot, there's just something about that shot that suggests a song. Like a, a, yes. title, a title will pop into my head. Or, just or an like, album cover, perhaps. Right, right. right. So there's definitely um, a, an overlap. There's definitely an influence where one... one kind of influences the other yeah definitely it's uh the, the artwork for your, your uh son of parkway yeah uh, what is do you have a story behind that yeah actually um years ago um this was when parkway mall was just kind of starting to go downhill and a lot of the stores had left i was driving through the parking lot one time i had my little digital camera with me and I saw the old, the round sign that said Parkway Mall. Yes, the P, the W. The P and the W. Yeah. And it was just all decrepit and it was all crooked and <laughs> just kind of looking like it was about to fall on the ground. And I just grabbed my camera and took a shot. And that's what you actually see on, on the album. I actually, uh, with, with uh, photo editing, I, I straightened it up a little bit. But uh, <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Can you share with the listeners where they may be able to find your uh, albums? Yeah, so... I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm slower at this than I used to be back in the day. And usually, you know, about 20 years ago, if I did an album, uh, by this point, I'd have them in every store from here to, you know, Toronto. But uh, anyway, right now m it's mostly online, but I am hoping to, uh, it's on Bandcamp and CD Baby, places like that. Uh, but I'm hoping very soon to get them into some local stores, Backstreet Records and, and places Fantastic. like that. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That, I think that's, you know, where I got most of your albums. Cool. Uh, cool. Backstreet Records. And actually, I got some personally from you as well. Yes, yes. I remember. Um, and uh, it's too bad because uh, we don't have the music that we recreated that we created that one evening in your yes. little room. Yes. Where I was playing the guitar and you were playing the... And we, I, I remember like being amazed because you had this machine that actually recorded it to CD. So you could just like finish it and then you just reject it and you've got it on CD. Yeah. I've never even seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> like before you... Yeah, that was... Uh, it that was, was so cool. And I still have that. It was like a standalone CD recorder. Yeah. So it looked just like a standard CD deck, but it actually recorded as well. Um, and I love that thing. I still use it. Oh, yeah. Um, they... There was a time in the early 2000s where, where those were kind of popular, but uh, they, they, you don't see them around as much anymore. Did you ever tape uh, songs off the radio with that? Like you used to do with tapes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I, make I, CDs. I've used that thing in a lot of different ways. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, I remember I got my first ghetto blaster when I was about 11. And uh, my mom and dad had this old floor model Zenith television. And the speaker on the television was about... Uh, two and a half feet off the floor 
And what I would do, the Ghetto Blaster had a built-in microphone, and I would lean it up against the speaker on the TV, and the, the microphone would line up perfectly with the speaker on the TV, and I would record the audio off of music videos. Oh, fantastic. And I still have a whole ton. That's next level, man. Yeah, I, I still have tucked away somewhere all those tapes that I made when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. I still have them. So I would love to go through <laughs> the collection. Yeah, of me like too. Stuff like I'll that. have to digitize them someday. <laughs> Actually, speaking of things, do you still have copies of any of like, the Nightwaves zines? Tucked away, yes, yes. Uh, I must dig them out. I Actually, I have all these projects that I want to do, and one of the projects is someday I'd like to scan every issue of Night Waves and, and put, put them online so that people can access them and, and read them. Can you tell us a little bit more about Night Waves? I know a little bit yeah, about yeah, it just I'd from love to hear that as well. myself, but I, I also know that you said earlier, uh, talking about Night Waves, you said that you interviewed some local people, but you also interviewed some pretty big names, uh, if I recall. I was very lucky, uh, very lucky. Um, yeah, so I was always into zines. Um, uh, growing up, I was into comic books. I spent a lot of time at the Sorcerer's Stone in St. John. And I used to see these things called zines. And I thought, that's cool. So when I was, I think, 26, 27 years old, I thought, I'm going to do a zine about local electronic music. And like you said, I interviewed a, a, a few of the local folks who were around at the time. Uh, but I was also fortunate to talk to some really big names. Uh, I actually reached out to uh, uh, Robert, Robert Moog, who invented oh, the Moog synthesizer. Wild. That's who I was right? thinking. When I... Right. Yeah. And... Uh, the crazy thing is, you would think, oh, some guy from New Brunswick who does a zine, who's going to talk to this guy? But what I found was a lot of these people, like Robert Moog, he was a genuinely nice guy, very down to earth, very sweet. And I sent him an email. I said, uh, hello, Mr. Moog, um, <laughs> I'm Gary. Uh, I publish a zine. I'd love to interview you. And he said, oh, yes, by all means, please send me the questions. And, uh, Fantastic. Yeah, so I, I think back then, actually, they were called electronic mails. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Electronic <laughs> mails. Yes, yes. Uh, electronic but, mails. But yeah, I, I was fortunate to chat with him. Uh, who else? Uh, Roger Lynn, uh, who invented the, the Lynn drum machine. Um, in terms of artists, I spoke with uh, Ron Mail from Sparks. Uh, I spoke with, oh my wow. goodness. Um, That's really cool. My, my friend Corey Graves was also involved. He was sort of like my... my yeah, comp I used to have a show after mine out here yes, on the station. Yes. Uh, he, what was it called, though? I can't recall um, what it was Brave New Graves? Brave New Graves. No, That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Brave yeah. New Graves. Yeah. So what was That's that it. show all about? He, he just played wacky music, really. Like If I remember correctly, he played like a lot of really... Uh, like underground electronic artists yes. and stuff. And, and, and Corey actually used to run a, a, a micro label called Eleven Wave, and he actually released one of my albums. I, I did an album called Dressed in Black, and yes. he, he released it on, on his label. Uh, but Corey was kind of like my, my comrade with Night Waves. He would write little articles, and uh, he was really into electronic music as well. Um, and yeah, we, we reached out to a lot of artists, um, and I was just really lucky to, to interview some people that I really looked up to. I would love to read some of that uh, zine as I must well. How many, them out. how many, uh, like... Yeah, uh, you can do that tonight, please. <laughs> Actually, I, Get just, on it. I just remembered uh, two big, like, artists who I really admired, who I never thought I would speak to. Uh, I actually spoke with Mark Mothersbaugh from Devo. Wow. Oh, wow. On, on the phone. I spoke to him on the phone. A lot of the interviews were done through email, but that particular one was on the phone. Mark Mothersbaugh, he was great. He was very, very no-nonsense. Yeah. And his answers were just like to the point and very blunt, but yeah. very... That's because he had to get back to writing the 50 million soundtracks he wrote. Yes, <laughs> yes. But just a real sharp guy. Very sharp, very bright. And I also spoke with, um, oh my God, my brain is going on me, but the guy from Suicide, not the singer. Um, oh, Martin, I, know, I know who you're talking Martin about. Martin Rev. Yeah, Martin yeah. Martin Rev. Uh, I spoke to him on the phone uh, in, in where he lived in New York City and... Uh, he was great. Again, very calm, very nice, collected guy. Uh, gave me some really brilliant answers to my questions. And uh, again, I, I had a ball doing Night Waves. I, I, again, I spoke to people that I never thought I'd talk to in a million years. Yeah, so I it, say bring it back. 
Well, you well, did a you, never uh, know, you, you did know. a cover of a suicide tune too. We should listen to that later on in the program. Yes, actually, um, there was a show. My friend Stephanie and I we we did. Um, it was I love living in the port city. It was one of those shows where each band ah uh, yes did covers of like they chose a band and did a whole oh, set. Oh, that's what that was for. And okay, Stephanie and I did uh, suicide. Oh, and, okay, and I, and I was Martin Rev on the keyboards, and I had the big uh, the big sunglasses mm. and everything. And did it, you do the vocals too? Uh, no, no, oh. Stephanie did most of the vocals, nice. so yeah, it all, it was it's great. Such, that's such a beautiful song, and so many uh, artists have, uh, have, uh, have done uh, versions of it, like uh, yeah. Bruce Springsteen actually yeah. plays it live. Yeah, Dream Baby Dream. Dream yeah. Baby Dream, right. We didn't even <laughs> say what the song was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, funny <laughs> enough, I remember not that long ago, there was a commercial for uh, some perfume. And it showed these girls in in a in a in the woods, and they were playing that song in the background. Ah! Uh. And I remember thinking, what a weird world we live in when the music of suicide is being used to sell <laughs> perfume. You know, it's that's, true. That's pretty wacky. It's yeah. <laughs> Those guys were troubadours of like you know avant-garde yes. electronic music. Like yeah, they they took a lot of abuse in their early days. They the people just didn't get them at all. I mean, if you think about it, it was just one guy singing and one guy on, on like a synth and a beatbox. And to a lot of people, that was just bizarre and a lot of people just didn't get them. So, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah it's, I, I, I have one of their albums called The Second Album. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and, and it's not an easy album to listen to from True. beginning to end. True. You know, I find yes. that with very few albums, but that's definitely one of them. Yes. Um, <laughs> should we listen to some more music? Let's do that. All right. What, 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 do you have anything in mind? What do you want to listen to? Oh my goodness! Uh, you brought some stuff. You did. You brought you brought all kinds of CDs here. Yeah. Um, I just grabbed a bunch of uh, CDs by various bands who uh, have had a real uh, influence on me. Um, one band that uh, I really like a lot. Uh, they were called Images in Vogue. Uh, they were from Vancouver, and um, they they did all electronic music, all like done on uh, analog synths. And, um, and speaking of night waves, I actually interviewed one of the guys from images in Vogue back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they, they had a couple of hits, but it's more their, like, um, their B side stuff that I really think is cool. Mm -hmm. Um, they have uh, track number seven, it's called, uh, four Germans. Okay. And, uh, I guess we can listen to that. Yeah, let's try that. Oh, uh, sorry. That's just, uh, all right. So four Germans yeah. on music we like. All right, we're back on music we like. That was, oh, I was what planned. Was yes, it was planned. Yes. <laughs> what we just hear? <laughs> okay, so the song we just heard was called Digital Delight, and that was by a band from Montreal called Ico, and that was recorded way back in 1983. And Ico is kind of a mystery band. Not many people know much about them. I guess they recorded one album and then they just disappeared. Uh, but I always loved it because they, as you could tell, that it's very raw, primal synth music. Uh, so that was Ico. And before that, we heard, it, we heard a band I love a lot called Images in Vogue. And uh, they were a big new wave band in the 80s. They came from Vancouver. And the song we heard was called Four Germans. Nice. Okay, Ico, uh, I, I have a question. Uh, did you see them live? Never. Did no? Never. Have, did anybody did, ever did see them anyone live? Ever That's a good live. question. Um, I don't know if they did many live gigs back in the day, but uh, I, I should look into that. I wonder if, uh, do you know the names of anybody in the group? Probably not, eh? I think if you have the, the original album, the, the names of the band are on the, the okay. record sleeve, so I'm sure that's findable. It'd be interesting to see what they went on to do after Ico, because it was really interesting stuff. It was very, I found it had a, a lot of uh, Krautrock uh, feel much. to it, you know, yes. or like a craft work, rather. Yes. Like so much music that you listen to, it sounds so much better once you have headphones on. That's yeah. that's something that yeah. we talk about a lot, Jeff yeah. and I, on the we air do, we and do. outside, mm -hmm. is headphones, and we we actually, uh, I, I like to ask people because it makes me feel better about myself when people agree that sometimes wearing headphones is, you know, way better than I talking am, to people. <laughs> I, I, I'm a big time headphones guy. <laughs> oh, I, me too. I, I actually, I was given a pair of realistic headphones when I was 11 and I still use that same pair of headphones. They, wow. And they still, they still sound terrific. Wow. So I, I've spent most of my life with headphones. That would have been Radio head. Shack, probably. Yes, yes. Oh my so goodness. over the ear, like, 
comfortable Very beast much. headphones. Yes, I love mm-hmm. them. I, I love headphones in general. Yeah. I've um, been toying with the idea of getting some of the Bluetooth. Uh, my family m- bought wireless. me a, a set of Bluetooth for Christmas last year, and yeah. honestly, like I love I love them so nice. much. My family, I mean, <laughs> and the headphones. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something else that that we were talking about. Uh, I always I always want to say on the break, but it's it, when it, the music is playing. So it's, it's, it's a break, break from the music, though. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's the opposite for the listeners. It's like, yeah. Um, so the ties between punk music and electronic music. It's yes. It's always been super interesting to me, and I know we touched on it a little bit yes. before, but um, I, I don't know. I, I want to have a better understanding of how that happens because it, to me it does seem the only kind of thing that I can – I'm asking you a question and then talking for a really long time mm-hmm. after it – is uh, <laughs> the only thing that I can really kind of think right away would be maybe like the idea of being on the outside. Yes. Very much so, yeah. The, the best way I can sum it up, um, one band that I love is the the Human League, and their later stuff was very pop. But in the early days, they were this dark, el- experimental, experimental uh, electronic band. And Philip Oakey, the lead singer, he said, "You know, we were more punk than the punks, because we used to laugh at the punks because they would go off and learn three chords. We didn't even do that. We just used one finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Arpeggiator. Yes. That's so great. He said, I find that they're both like uh, electronic music and punk music. Uh, you know, in uh, when it was uh, in the early days, all they both had like DIY, like Very much. sort of like they did their own artwork, their own posters, their own. Yeah. Like, you know, and it was like it was almost like the ethos that anybody can play this music, pick up a guitar, or like get a get a keyboard, Very much and just so. go for it. You know. Yeah, and even a lot of a lot of the the bands that I love from the '80s, they all had like punk roots. Um, and, and funny enough, I mentioned earlier that back when I was doing shows, uh, I did a lot of shows with punk bands. And it, it, it's kind of odd to think of this guy, this solo guy with a synth doing shows with punk bands, but it always seemed to go over well. Uh, I did a bunch of all ages shows with punk bands and the kids were really into it. They all would start dancing and... Uh, you told a story or... Er- you told, story yeah, I love or- that story. <laughs> right, right. Tell, tell us again. Yeah, that's such a good story. Yeah, so I did a show one time in Halifax uh, with, with my buddy Philip Clark. Uh, Philip, who at that time went by the, under the name A.V., and uh, we did a show together at an indoor skate park in, in Halifax. And uh, I think it was called TKO Skate Park. And Philip had to leave, but he said to me, Gary, when it's your turn to get up there on stage, just get up there and get your gear set up as quickly as you can and launch into your set. Because he said, the people of Halifax, if they don't know a band, they'll just leave. So get up there as quickly as you can, get your gear set and launch into your set. Uh, so I ran up, I got all the cables plugged in, made sure everything was turned on. I looked out into the crowd and I saw about 50 punk kids looking at me and, you know, just with this <laughs> look of who the hell are you and <laughs> what are you doing with that keyboard thing? Uh, and I was really terrified, but I just thought, oh, well, and I just launched into the set and it actually went down quite well. I think anybody who remembers That's seeing fantastic. you show, seeing you do shows, would remember that you really do have a great stage presence. Oh, oh yeah, thank you. I like it. I love. I loved the, the moment when you started throwing candy at everybody. <laughs> that, that was that was like the piece de resistance. <laughs> well, f- funny enough, um, back in my late teens, early twenties, I, I was really involved with theater. Uh, so when I started to do music, I think I was taking a lot of what I learned in the theater and kind of instilling that into the yeah. the, the, the music. So, yeah. <laughs> I know it's def- it, I totally remember that. Like, I remember talking to you, uh, like when you came off the stage after a show and, uh, it, it was, you were the calm Gary. Yeah. And then when you were on the stage, you just like, you would, you adopted the persona, you know, of yes. like a, of a performer and like you, you went for it yeah. and people really loved it, man. Like people really, really loved it. And so, and I was one of them. Do like, you. do you recognize your stage presence like is it a persona do you like is there you know it's very much a persona yeah Uh, you wouldn't believe like people have approached me people have approached my wife and have said things to my wife like wow what's it like being married to the wild man gary flanagan and (laughs) and she'll tell them look if you knew gary gary is so quiet and so introverted and shy i'm a very shy person 
Uh, so I can tell you that what you saw on stage was very much a persona. It was very much a character. How yeah. would you describe that persona? That persona was everything that I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm a very shy, reserved, kind of introverted guy. And the, the person I became on stage was the polar opposite of that. Is that a very comfortable place for you to be, to very be much. that persona? Very much. Well, that description uh, is exactly yeah. right, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and, that's fantastic. Yeah. There's just something, and I've heard a lot of artists say this, that, in you know, normally they're very shy people but when they get on stage they kind of they become this polar opposite thing uh david byrne of talking heads once said that um he f he pushed himself on stage like he he literally had to push himself because he he was the same way he felt very awkward and very self-conscious but he he had this strong desire to, to just get out there and and perform yeah but he literally had to push himself on stage and I, I felt that way a lot too I think that's the way I would be as well like I sure. I've, I've played music in front of a crowd like a couple of times but mm -hmm. it, it was it's a very nerve-wracking thing I don't oh, know what yeah. happens because yeah uh, it, it's actually similar sometimes on the radio as well even though sure. like you, there, you can't see your audience but maybe that's the thing though you can't see the audience so it's like yes. I don't know just nerves I guess of course but, uh, once you get over that, once you like get over that hill, though, it's like yes, it's it, you. You can let your art flow. You it's know? interesting the desire, though. I mean, if there there are so many. I mean, one of my favorite artists in in, in forever <laughs> is uh, Martin Tielli, and Martin Tielli is somebody else who does, um, who has like been open about his issues with anxiety and, mm -hmm. and specifically his uh, his fear, his stage fright. Yeah, yes, you know. Yes. But to have that desire, and I'm not sure how large his desire is to perform now, you know. But but knowing that all the people out there that want so badly to perform, but it is like death performing. Yeah, like yeah. I crazy. and I totally get it. Like stage fright, it, uh, that was a big reason why I stopped acting. Uh, I just couldn't handle the stage fright anymore. And and again, kind of why I shied away from live shows is just that the anxiety was pretty uh, intense. Uh, but as we were saying earlier, who knows? I, I, I would never say never. Uh, I'm yeah. sure that there, there You'll might be some You'll be back. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, it'll be it'll be great if you did, and and it's you know, it's it, there's no pressure, of course. You know, sure. you know, it's whatever you're ready for. Yeah. Can we play another Gary tune? Yeah, sure. We can. Sure. Yeah. Let me just cue one up here. Yeah. How about something off of Anthems for the Young at Heart again? Sure, That's, yes. This is off your very, very first album. What was the, uh, there was a track that you said that was on a compilation from that? Oh, uh, yeah. On vinyl? That might be a good one to play. Um, Every Friday Night. Uh, yeah, that, that song has kind of gone on and taken on a personality of its own. Um, uh, Every Friday Night, it's a short song. I think it's only about two minutes long. Yeah, um, it is exactly one fifty nine. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, it seems to be a, a popular one. A lot of people have given me positive comments about it. So uh, yeah, well, that sounds good. We'll hear that. This is this was when this was released in ninety seven. Uh, I record I recorded it between ninety seven ninety eight. I think it came out in ninety nine. Okay, so, yeah. All Going right. Back. So this is. Uh, uh, what was it? Every Friday night. Every Friday night. Off of Anthems for the Young at Heart by Gary Flanagan. He's been our guest, our gracious guest. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. in. Thank by you. The way. My pleasure. This is, this My is pleasure. fantastic. <laughs> All right, here we go. On Music We Like. On Music We Like. <laughs> All right, we're back on Music We Like. That was Rational Youth, who I thought was always a punk band. Right. I didn't know they did uh, synth pop like this. Well, as far as I know, I may be wrong, but I think they did punk kind of in their real early days, and then they gradually went over to synths. You think if they were a punk band, they would call themselves Irrational Youth? <laughs> yeah. It's a good point. Good point. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is this thing on? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, that reminds me. I forget what I was going to say. Oh, no, you were going to talk about uh, inventing things. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Oh. That was an off-air conversation. Oh, that was an off-air conversation. Well, do you guys remember anything that you've invented, but then you realize <laughs> it already was a thing? I can't remember specifically, but I know I've done that. I, I, I've thought of something like, oh, that would be great, and then I realize, oh, yeah, it's already been invented. 
I think or it used to be for me, I, I would invent things and I'd be really excited about them. I'd never do anything with them. And then somebody else, then I'd see one. Like one time I for a long time, I was talking about how I wanted to come up with a peanut butter cookbook. And I was like, yes, one day. And then there was a freaking peanut butter cookbook. Uh, yes. <laughs> so if you want to listen to this conversation again, folks, you can uh, tune into our rebroadcast on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> three to five. <laughs> From three local, to five. Yeah, 107. And you can hear uh, all about uh, Gary Flanagan then again as well. <laughs> This has been fantastic. I've yeah. learned so much. I've had a blast. And just had a blast just hanging out with friends. Thank you. And, uh, you know, sharing it with our thousands of listeners. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. That's how we roll. Yeah. You know? We we talked a little bit about the um, stage fright and then um, how when you're on the radio, it's you're still performing. You don't know who you're performing to. Right. It's, a, it's an odd... It's an odd kind of feeling. And actually, we talked a little bit about the... You had mentioned that you had heard of some people who... Um, are performing from their homes via the internet with right. the cameras and of course audio as well and yeah I, I've I, I've often thought that was a real interesting concept and uh, just the thought of doing a concert in my living room uh, and and who knows that that might happen someday yeah. right speaking of performing guys while you guys are talking I'm just going to play my little roll up that sounds uh, good piano go ahead <laughs> what are we talking oh yeah so <laughs> we were talking earlier and i wanted i wanted to touch upon this just before uh like where's the furthest that you've traveled uh, and played your music montreal um, probably montreal okay. yeah that was back in um 2003 uh, i went up and i actually uh i don't know if you guys have ever heard of bj snowden Yes, uh, the uh, Canada. Canada, uh, yeah. What, what's I, the tune though? Made um, in Canada? No, in, what, can in, in, in Canada. Canada. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, uh, that is just an insanely strange. Because they're like w B. J. Snowden is from the United States, right? Yes, like she, where? She's from like uh, uh, Detroit, Massachusetts, Massachusetts. Okay. But she has relatives in uh, in uh, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. And when I went up to Montreal, I was basically her opening act, and uh, that was a blast. Um, when I told her I was from New Brunswick, she just freaked out. She was like, "Oh my goodness, Gary Flanagan, you're from New Brunswick?" And she ha she ha she has a song. She has a song called I New Brunswick. It. Yes, and that's right. Where she, that she on a where talk she, show, like a big talk show, Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. Like yes. Oh yeah, yes. Right. that's right. Yeah. yeah. And she actually, um, I th I believe she put out a Christmas album that was produced by Fred Schneider of the B52s. What? Um, so yeah, she was great. She she did her set, and when she started her song New Brunswick, she said, "This song is going out to Gary Flanagan. He's from New Brunswick." <laughs> oh, <amazing>. that is <laughs> the best. That it, well, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but B.J. Snowden is in the same sort of realm of uh, like outside artists yes, as yes. like you know Daniel Johnston, exactly. And, yeah, and Wesley the, Willis. Yeah, the the I, it was actually myself, and there was another guy there called Synthetic Folk Hero. It was basically like three. That is a great name. Three actually. eccentric uh, solo electronic artists. Basically, was the theme of the of the night, and uh, yeah, it was an awesome show. I, I had a great time. Well, we got to play that tune. It's probably not a hit, so we could get away with playing it. Possibly. Oh, that's a, I was just rapping there. <laughs> You're that's probably rapping. not a hit, so we could get away with playing it. Oh yeah, yeah cool. that playing it threw it off. <laughs> Wait, I could probably do like a, a little drum solo okay. and then do Let's and actually it. do that. Um, but Are maybe not. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Let's turn up the volume a bit here. And uh, all right, go ahead, Andrew. Rap. No, no, you're <laughs> you're the rapper. I don't know how to rap. Do rap in one of your accents. But this is a. Uh, this is my. Uh, this is the roll-up piano. I brought it in, hoping hoping that Gary Flanagan would would play a tune for us. <laughs> but well, it, it's know. really asking a lot. It's, it's kind of really, daunting. It's really asking a lot. But <laughs> anyway, oh, anyways, uh, don't let this. Don't let me playing. I, I feel like we're on this weird like talk show, like between two ferns or something, <laughs> and I'm just the guy, you know, playing the playing the roll-up piano. Oh, little little distortion there. Ah. All right, anyway. So what were we talking about? <laughs> uh, Derailed. BJ Snowden. Oh, yeah, BJ Snowden. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. This song's going out to Gary Flanagan. Yeah, and, she, and I have to say, she was a sweetheart. She was very down-to-earth and nice. And the, the funny thing is, um, I, I, I used to do a song called Candy. I and love that tune. Towards the end of the song, I, I would always take some candy and throw it into the crowd. Many people don't know this, but I got the inspiration for that from B.J. Snowden because when I saw her in Montreal, 
she was on stage with her like 90 year old mother and at one point in the show they had a bag of bubble gum and they started throwing bubble gum into the crowd <laughs> and i thought i'm gonna do that <laughs> yeah why not I'd never, i never i always wondered where you got that idea yeah, that's yeah. fantastic <laughs> Uh, you guys know the band Grand Theft Bus. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There's this guy, uh, Greg, who used to be called Toastmaster, and he would do. You, do you guys? Do you guys ever hear this? He would sit on stage and just make toast or pop tarts <laughs> okay. or whatever, and just hand it really? back into the crowd. Yeah, for that's like, awesome. That, See, yeah. I love I love that kind of stuff where people push the envelope. Oh, sorry, he was called Toastmaster G. Toastmaster uh, G. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, that's that's, Actually, that's fantastic. the first time Toastmaster G got a shout out on the on the radio. Yes. <laughs> That's Isn't awesome. there? Bring it a, back, Toastmaster. G. You guys are familiar with um, oh, what's the name of that UK band? That uh, the guy literally like one guy does like crazy like sort of punkish rap like it like it's kind of strange to explain. Oh, S- Sleaford Mods. That's who I'm talking about. Are you familiar with those guys? No. no, no. And uh, the other guy. Tell us more, Jeff. The other guy, like, so one guy does all this rapping, and then the other guy, all he does is basically just like he he has like a beer on stage, and he presses one button, and then like. And then just stands there, That's drinks awesome. his beer, <laughs> while the other guy does, and he kind of does a little bit of dancing. It reminds me actually uh, of that awesome Saturday Night Live skit. I was just gonna say, yeah. listeners should know yeah. that yeah. Jeff, when he keeps <laughs> saying dancing, he's dancing, but he's he's doing the moves that uh, uh, Tracy Morgan Tracy Morgan yeah. does on uh, that. Uh, yeah, you you know that one. Wish yeah. wish it was Christmas it's today. Yeah. That one. We, let's let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. I got I got the roll up piano. I'll just do the dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that always cracks me up. It's oh. classic. You have to watch that at least once a year. Yes. Yes. That's a rule. What do you think? Should we listen to some uh, music by The Fall? Yeah, let's Op- listen to music by The Fall. Sure. This is Bill Is Dead by The Fall on music we like. Hi, welcome ah, back. Welcome back, everybody. This is the soothing sounds of what Jeff put on. You are listening to the soothing sounds of Oscar Peterson in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't very soothing at all that we heard before that. And it was simply Saucer off their album Cyborg Revisited. That was Mole Machine. Before that, we heard The Fall off their album Extricate, the expanded edition. That was Bill is Dead. And you know what? Way back, we heard Nick Drake, Hazy Jane 2, <laughs> off Brighter Later. And then we heard Ott, uh, a track called Habit from their album more than any other day and then you're all caught up people caught up you know I, I hate nice. it when you're like you listen to a radio s- program and then it's like what was that song and they just don't tell you not everybody has Shazam Jeff no I know <laughs> Shazam what is Shazam I don't know I just made that word up okay no, it's that app that w- you uh, you pointed at music and it's like you're listening oh, to this song yes. oh okay I like I thought that was some kind of a superpower that you were talking about. It's kind of like all. a superpower. Yeah. You know, you're like, what is this song? <laughs> right. You I think I remember a cartoon called Shazam way back in the day. It was like a s- superhero. Or yeah, that okay. Right. Something like that. Ah, what a great show! Yeah. yeah. My goodness, thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank Gary. you for asking me. It's been Gary a blast. Flanagan. Anytime. In the sh- in the program for the whole duration of the show, you yeah. shared some of your own music. You shared some of the music that you love. It was my honor. I, I had a blast. You told some wonderful stories. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you got to come back. I'd love please, to. Please, please promise I'd, me. I'd love to. And Andrew right now that yes. you'll come back. I'd love to. And when Pinky you do swear. come back, can you play the full the roll-up piano for I, us? Just I, like a little ditty? I will bring my entire studio. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Let's do it. <laughs> get, get planning on the... And my uh, cat. Absolutely, cat. <laughs> You should get planning on the uh, um, uh, home show, the broadcast. Yes. I I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah, that is a great idea. Yes. All right, stay tuned for Shift Register coming up right after Music We Like. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We're going to, like, just play some tunes to to, uh, end the show this evening. Uh, Thanks. Lock it into the dial, too. There's all kinds of good stuff in this radio. Yep. And if the show, if the radio station needs you on the show, then you should come in and uh, talk to the fine folks here. Get yourself hooked up. With anybody can show. have a show. Anybody. And believe, believe you me. Yeah. Anybody. Yeah. Anybody. I mean. Bring in your dog <laughs> and they can have a show. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. 
<laughs> and they'll play like I Want to Be Your Dog yeah. by like Iggy Pop and like and all other, other dog dogs. songs. Dog songs. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Thanks, Gary, Thank very you much. So much. Thanks, Andrew, Thanks, for being Jeff. Andrew. Thanks, listener. <laughs> yep. Thanks, listener. And we'll talk to you next week. And oh, yeah. And definitely check out Tuesday, 3 to 5 for the rebroadcast. Bye bye. <laughs> you are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Wait, are you going to play more music? Yeah, I am. I'm just trying to cue it up here. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, All now right. bye. Bye. Right. Yeah, now bye. Okay, now bye. Bye. <laughs>